Easter Sunday, 2012, Trigardock Beach, Cornwall. After an uneventful morning's fishing, Paul Sleeman and his father Peter had just set off for home when there was a freak accident. I probably went down over like a nine foot drop, which we were, um, and as soon as I knew I was in the water, you, the sea just really turned and rolled and Obviously, I knew as soon as I was in there, I was in trouble, really. With Paul struggling in the surf, Peter grabbed a lifeline, threw it to his son, and started to drag him in. Dad got me probably within 10 to 15 foot from the rocks. Um, also I remember shouting to him to get back, and that's when... And he kept saying, no, no, I've, I've got you, you're going to be right. And we've had another freak wave come in and so he took Dan off the rocks as well. He was still conscious when I got to him, but sadly he didn't make it. And I said, probably from then on, I had about three quarters of an hour I had to hold on to Dad, really. As Paul clung on to his unconscious father in the rough sea, a passerby heard his shouts for help. They alerted the Coast Guard, and Port Isaac lifeboat crew received a launch request. First to arrive at the station were crew members Nicky Bradbury and Matthew Main, and helmsman Damien Bolton. It was the first time Damien had responded to a rescue alert since he and his wife lost their baby. Nicky and Matt both said to me, you know, are you sure you want to do, you're all right to do this? And I felt, um, I felt hesitant, but in no way was I not going to set to sea. As we were in the station before we left, I had already said to Matt and Nicky, get your mindset ready for veering down, because if they're in a, along the coastline, um, that's the only thing we're going to be able to do to, to help them. Veering would mean using the lifeboat's engines and anchor to reverse towards the casualties. In the rough conditions, it would take no little skill and courage. But as they headed to the sea, Damien knew it may be the only way. We didn't see him straight away because he was being bashed by the incoming wave and the, the rebound off the cliff. So he was only about 10 foot away from the cliff and um, we spotted him and he literally stuck his hand up and shouted for help. The only option we've got is to veer down and it's, it's going to be a risky um, procedure. And they both looked to me and said, whatever you think's best, we'll go with it. And then it's all about communication. Um, I was telling Damien how many, how many metres of uh, anchor warp we had out. He would say, hold fast, which makes make sure we got a, uh, a transit point on the coast and then we have to make sure that anchor's held because we're in such treacherous um, conditions. If it didn't hold, we were, we were gonna get slammed against the rock. So it was absolutely paramount that we were, we were holding that anchor. We were getting swamped by the waves coming in. Um, and I got within sort of six feet of pool and that's when we could see his dad. Um, I couldn't get the boat any closer because of the, the debris in the water, the ropes. So I said to Paul, you've, you've got to swim to the boat. He's, and he sort of very calmly but firmly said no. Um, and then that's when I had to say to him quite sternly, if you do not let go of your dad and swim to the boat, you will die. And he swam towards us and he literally stuck his hand out of the water. Um, I grabbed hold of him with my left hand, shouted for help from like Matthew and Damien, you're going to have to help me. And he literally we pulled him in and then um, he filled up the whole boat. As we did that, one of the incoming swells engulfed the boat and one of the outgoing rebound swells of the cliff came and met in the middle right on the boat. And what happened was the rebounding swell thrust the exhaust gases back up through the prop and killed the engine. Now the crew were at the mercy of the sea with no power to escape. Fortunately, the D-Class lifeboat is equipped with a restart button. Damien pressed it and the propeller spun back into life. We cut the anchor and I just hard geared forward and, and powered out through the surf. Once we got the um, engine started, I carried on holding on to this line and luckily it was still attached to Peter. 
Peter had been face down in the water for a long time, and the crew could see he wasn't breathing. Their priority had to be Paul, who was losing consciousness. An RAF helicopter arrived on the scene, and the air crew rushed Paul to hospital. His body had just started to close down. It, you know, it couldn't take any more, and um, so Paul was in a real dire state um, himself. You know, the the, the exhaustion that. Um, he took himself to was immense. For, for someone fully clothed to hold on to a fully grown man fully clothed in that situation, for the length of time he did, in those conditions and that temperature of sea, amazing, absolutely mind-blowing. Paul's father was beyond medical help. Nicky, Matthew and Damien carefully took Peter's body to shore, an act that will never be forgotten by Paul and his family. One thing that they've, they've always said, they're immensely grateful that we could help Paul and, and made sure that he came back. But for them to be able to have Pete to, to lay to rest is, is, is well, they, you know, that's one of the biggest things for them. You know, what they do really is, you know, all voluntary. And you know, I know definitely that they all three risked their lives that day to, to save me. And, you know, it's quite easy probably for some people to say that, but for me to see, you know, what they've done is unbelievable, really, and think, yeah, they all do it just for the love of it, really, and also do it because they want to help people, really. It's amazing, really.